tonight in Y News. A retired official of the Armed Forces of the Philippines speaks on the call of former President Rodrigo Duterte for the entire Philippine National Police to resign and allow the AFP to take over. Some residents in Santo Domingo Albay evacuate after hearing rumblings from the Mayon volcano. The Philippine Ascals defeat Nepal in an international friendly game at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And North Korea fires two ballistic missiles into Japan's exclusive economic zone in protest of the United States-South Korea drills. Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, June 16, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Marielle Latoza. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Marvi Delphine. In the news, a retired official of the Armed Forces of the Philippines is not in favor of the call of former President Rodrigo Duterte for the entire Philippine National Police to resign and allow the AFP to take over. Dante Amento tells us why. Retired Marine Colonel Ariel Carubin said the problem in the Philippine National Police or PNP is the leadership. It needs a leader that would bring the organization to its real mission as a law enforcer. Kasi sabihin na natin na tarnish na tarnish yung image ng kapulisan ngayon dahil sa ongoing ano no yung yung uh, alos araw-araw na hearing on drug pero may may mga paraan naman na pwede pang salbahin. Dapat lang talaga mahusay yung kanilang ano na namumuno. Hence, Kerubin believes it is not ideal for the entire PNP to resign and let the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP to take over. This was the former AFP official's reaction when asked about the challenge of former President Rodrigo Duterte for the PNP to resign because of the issue of illegal drugs. He understands the former Commander-in-Chief's position. Yeah, alam mo, exasperated, kumbaga sa ano, ano na siya eh, parang pikon na pikon na si dating pang, Pangulo eh. <laughs> Kaya y- yun yung mga uh, nakasanayan na rin naman natin na ganun ang, ano niya, ganun ang style. Pero uh, hindi, yeah. hindi mo naman dapat kunin yun hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, parang no, message, no. message lang yun na mag-shape, mag-shape up kayo. Kerubin explained that the drug menace affects not only the PNP personnel but also other law enforcement agencies including the AFP. But the AFP maintains as mission-oriented. Yung ano ng military kasi mission-oriented sila. They, they get things done. They get things done. Sabihan mo sila kung ano yung gusto mong pagawa, ginagawa na agad. Dante Amen to UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court Branch 256 Presiding Judge Romeo Buenaventura voluntarily inhibits from the last illegal drug case of former Senator Laila de Lima. In an order released by the judge, he said his inhibition is not because he has bias or is partial with the case, but due to the issue of suspicion by some co-accused of the case. The Lima's co-accused Janelle Sanchez, Ronnie Dayan, and former Bureau of Corrections or Bureau Chief Franklin asked the judge to inhibit from the case. Bukayo argued the judge is biased and one-sided over the case. Several groups have expressed concern on the proposed temporary housing of Afghan nationals in the Philippines. In today's hearing of the Senate Committee of Foreign Relations, several government agencies believe this might pose threats to national security. I think the apprehension uh, we noted is that uh, they may have uh, sympathizers from the southern Philippines, from our Muslim brothers. So that is a possibility. 
We all also express the same uh, anxiety because they are given also the opportunity to, uh, for this, uh, some terrorists uh, to travel and that is a problem of uh, records checking and uh, it will pose some uh, security concern later on. Uh, this could be used as a propaganda and uh, it could also, since our, our apprehension is about the sleepers, uh, they could always uh, be activated and uh, it will have an impact as far as uh, the revival of uh, some activities in the South. The National Commission on Muslim Filipinos also voiced out its concern that the entry of Afghan nationals might put the country in danger and as a target of attack. We are not uh, particularly concerned about the infiltration or the uh, sleepers uh, among this uh, coming Afghanistan, but more of uh, being a target of an attack. Uh, as we all know, just recently, this uh, Wednesday, an incident happened in Marawi again uh, concerning uh, the same group who caused the Marawi siege. So apparently they're regrouping and uh, they're growing in numbers. If their mobility will not be limited, and even if their mobility will be limited, uh, these people from the south or these uh, uh, sympathizers of the uh, ISIS-inspired group can easily you know, travel to uh, Luzon. Philippine Ambassador to the United States, Jose Manuel Babe Romualdez, says the United States vowed that all Afghan nationals will undergo strict vetting process before they enter the Philippines. He adds that up to 50,000 Afghan nationals have pending applicants for their American special immigrant visas. The Philippine Weather Bureau Pag-ASA predicts that several areas will experience below normal rainfall even during the rainy season. The agency said that more prediction centers around the world agree that the looming El Nino may reach the intensity of moderate to strong. Yung mga ibang areas na hindi highly exposed dito sa habagat season natin, may mga areas na posibleng mag-start as early as August, yung mga may reduction sa tubig nila. Pagasa is now gathering other data to specify which areas in the Philippines may experience below normal rainfall, especially in the last quarter of 2023. The government is preparing to mitigate the possible impact of the phenomenon. The palace has already ordered national government agencies to reduce their water consumption by 10%. The Chinese government formally turned over the urea fertilizer to the Philippine government earlier this morning in Valenzuela City. This event was attended by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines, Wang Xilian. The 20,000 metric tons of fertilizer equivalent to 400,000 bags amounts to 100 million yuan or 783 million pesos. This grant is part of the agreement on economic and technical cooperation between the two countries signed on April 25, 2019. The Chinese government hopes that the fertilizers could help local farmers. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. stated that these will be given to farmers as part of the government subsidy program. Inuna na muna natin dito sa Luzon. Uh, so, it is distributed ito sa Luzon through the voucher system uh, that we already have. So, isasama na lang natin itong supply ng fertilizer na ito. Some residents of the town of Santo Domingo Albay have been forced to evacuate even though they have not been ordered to leave their areas. Most of them are from Barangay Lidong, which is covered by the 7-kilometer extended danger zone. They are apparently becoming more afraid after constantly hearing the rumblings coming from the volcano. Alan Manansala will tell us why. The local government of Santo Domingo has not yet obligated Mrs. Marlene's family to evacuate, yet they have been forced to leave their homes because of their fear of the volcano. Natakot na rin po kami, kaya naglikas na rin po kami dahil para sa anak ko rin po yun. Marlene's family is just one of the 11 families from Barangay Lidong that have already evacuated. 
The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, explained that the rumblings the residents are hearing from the volcano are large rocks falling from the crater to its slope. Because of gravity, the boulders are rolling down from up to 2 kilometers away from the crater, which is extremely dangerous if it reaches the roadways. While the distance of the lava flow is still 1 kilometer from its crater. Meanwhile, the recorded volcanic earthquakes and rockfall events in Mayon Volcano increased slightly over the past 24 hours. Based on the latest report of the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIBOX, Mayon Volcano recorded four new volcanic earthquakes and 307 rockfall events, while it emitted 826 tons of sulfur dioxide. Around 6 o'clock last night, the lava flowed again from the volcano crater. Presently, the Mayon volcano remains at high alert level 3. Alan Manansala, QNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Veteran photojournalist documents the terrifying beauty of the natural disaster in Albay province. In the face of danger and adversity, he fearlessly braved the wrath of the Mayon volcano eruption. Dun Soriao reports. Photojournalist Francis Malasig, also known as Lakai, and a dedicated member of the European Press Agency, fearlessly embarked on a journey to document the eruption of the Mayon volcano in the Albay province. Armed with his trusty camper van and a motorcycle, Malasig ventured into the heart of the disaster to capture spectacular images of evacuees and other notable figures revealing the strength and resilience of the affected communities. Hailing from Ilocos Norte, Lakay is in the field of photojournalism for nearly three decades. Yung una po ko pupunta po rito ay 96 halos ang namatay. Bata po po photographer, black and white pang camera that time. Yun. 1990, 1992 I think, hindi ko sure. No? Yan po yung sa isang bahagi po nito, bigla ang umapaw yung laba ng araw. Kaya lahat naman nagtatanim ng gulay, kamatis na nasa paanan nito ay inabot. Kaya nung kami po ay dumating na, Nilakad mula po rito hanggang doon ay nabutan yung mga sunog ng mga tao. With his versatile means of transportation, he navigated the challenging terrain to reach areas inaccessible to most, ensuring that his lens encapsulated the true essence of the eruption's aftermath. Throughout his photographic mission, Alasig skillfully translated to the indomitable spirit of the evacuees into captivating narratives. His lens revealed the courage, determination, and hope that permeated the affected communities, showcasing their unwavering resilience in the face of imminent danger. Not only did Lakai focus on capturing the experiences of evacuees, but also highlighted the relentless efforts of the public servants who worked tirelessly to assist those in need. Ang photography ako po kasi hindi lamang sa mayon ay hinahanap ko yung Para sa akin ay magandang larawan. Uh, ito pong uh, uh, nasa puso ko ito ang nagdadrive sa akin para hanapin po yung mga larawan na yun. Kaya yun po dahil lang kaya uh, nagsusumikap ako na mapuntahan yung iba-ibang sulok dito mayon para makita may dokumento, may isang larawan yung mga uh, kakaibang pagyayari dito sa mayon. Hindi lamang sa mayon, sa mga residente, sa mga nakatira, sa mga tiga-gobyerno naglilingkod, sa mga tao, at kung ano-ano pa. Known for his unwavering passion for storytelling through his lens, Malasig embarked on his daring expedition with a unique approach. His powerful images serve as reminder of the resilience inherent in human spirit, inspiring others to persevere in the face of adversity. Despite his age, he has no intention of retiring. Siguro, awat tulo ng Diyos hanggat binibigyan ako ng lakas, ay gusto ko manatili pa rin sana po yung bilang isang photojournalist. Jun Suryao, UNTV.
News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for our news abroad, North Korea fires two ballistic missiles into Japan's exclusive economic zone in protest of United States South Korea drills. Jane Robles details why live. Good evening, Jane. Good evening, Marvi. North Korea fired two short-range missiles around 7.30 p.m. local time yesterday, June 15, from its east coast into the Sea of Japan, about 250 kilometers north-northwest of Hegura Island, according to Japan's Defense Ministry and South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff. There were no immediate reports of damage to ships or aircraft near the area. The latest action came in less than an hour after Pyongyang's warning through state-run media of an inevitable response to one of the largest military exercises conducted by South Korea and the United States, which it perceives as an escalation of the tension in the region. The show of force also came after U.S. President Joe Biden's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met with his Japanese and South Korean counterparts Takeo Akiba and Cho Taeyong in Tokyo on Thursday, June 15. The trilateral talks focused on close cooperation and collaboration of its diplomatic efforts to persuade Pyongyang to abandon its nuclear arsenal. Japanese Vice Minister of Defense Kimi Onada said this marks the 13th in a string of banned weapons tests carried out by Pyongyang this year, which have landed within Japan's exclusive economic zone or EEZ. Despite reports that North Korea is already battling a domestic famine crisis, its leader Kim Jong-un has continued to channel the isolated country's financial resources into weapons development. Back to you, Marvi. Thank you, Jane Robles, reporting live from Vietnam. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization revealed that Ukrainian fighter pilots are now receiving training on F-16 jets in preparation for NATO's promise to deliver fighter jets to Ukraine in support of its defensive measures amid the ongoing tensions with Russia. Therese Longbowen explains why. Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, stated earlier today in a tweet that they must step up to support Ukraine's defense and strengthen itself for the long term, ensuring that history will not repeat itself. Ukraine is conducting a major counteroffensive. It is still early days and uh, we do not know uh, if this will be a turning point uh, of the war. But we see that the Ukrainians are making advances and liberating more land. During the pre-ministerial press conference, Brigadier General Oleski Romov stated yesterday that Ukraine has recaptured over 103 square kilometers since last week. Meanwhile, NATO allies are yet to approve the delivery of the fourth-generation United States fighter jets F-16, but trainings have already begun and are expected to last for many months. Concerns about Ukraine's readiness in using the jets are also being discussed, as Ukraine currently does not have suitable runways for the F-16 jets to land. Four months ago, U.S. President Joe Biden initially declined Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky's request for U.S.-made fighter jets to be sent to Ukraine, stating that Ukraine does not currently need the F-16s. However, he relented last month after receiving pleas from Ukrainian officials. The U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, said the Ukraine-Russia
Russia war is a difficult fight that will likely take a long time and come at a high cost. It is expected that Belgium, Luxembourg, the United Kingdom, and others will participate. Charis Longbowen, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The siphoning of the remaining oil from the sunken MT Princess Empress in Oriental Mindoro has been completed. This was confirmed by the Office of Civil Defense Under Secretary Ariel Nepomuceno. In a text message from Under Secretary Nepomuceno to UNTV, he mentioned that the Philippine Coast Guard or PCG needs to validate the siphoning. Today, some officers of the Philippine Coast Guard went to Oriental Mindoro for inspection. On May 29, DSV Fire Opal, the salvaging company hired by the insurance company of the sunken motor tanker, started the siphoning. It will be remembered that on February 28, the empty Princess Empress sank in the seawater vicinity of Nawan, Oriental Mindoro. The Department of Education, or DepEd, has clarified that the National Learning Camp on July 24 is voluntarily or voluntary for students and teachers. While it is voluntary, DepEd Undersecretary and Spokesperson Attorney Michael Poa said students who have low grades are highly encouraged to participate as this might affect their promotion to the next grade level. For teachers who will volunteer in the program, DepEd will provide additional leave credits even if their service credit is limited to 15 days. Boa said they are now finalizing the guideline for the start of a three-week national learning camp and are hoping to release them as soon as possible. Visitors were given a chance to try Filipino flavors featured at the Food Philippines Pavilion at the Taipei International Food Show 2023. Amiel Pascual has this report. Banana chips, cracklings, shingling, coconut oil, adobong mani, and calamansi juice were among the Filipino foods featured by the Food Philippines Pavilion at the Taipei International Food Show 2023, open on Wednesday, June 14. The annual Food Expo showcases products of Filipino micro, small, and medium enterprises through the collaboration of Philippine Trade and Investment Center, or PTIC, in Taipei, the Manila Economic and Cultural Office, or MECO, Department of Trade and Industry, and Philippine Export Groups. We have 16 companies actually na nag participate dito sa uh, Taipei International Food Show. Uh, ito yung mga exporters natin na um, na nagma-manufacture ng mga beverages, mga calamansi drinks, meron tayong mga vegetarian, na cracklings, meron din tayong mga uh, banana chips, meron din tayong mga calamansi juices. What we're trying to promote here is yung mga innovative products natin. Kasi alam nyo naman, ang Taiwan market, uh, medyo, ano siya, uh, medyo pang high-end din siya. Participation in international food exhibition targets promotion of Pinoy local brands and increase the Philippine export to Taiwan and around the world. Ang atin namang produkto, alright, kahit na ethnic pa rin ang dating niya, okay, still well accepted. Ang maganda rin kasi pag yung mga nurses, mga Pinoy, mga ibang engineers pumunta ng ibang bansa, no, nag-aasawa sila ng taga doon na itatawid nila yung kultura natin at sama na yung kalamansi. Itong mga International Trade Expo ay nakakatulong sa aming mga small and medium enterprises para ipromote ang aming produkto at makahanap kami ng mga distributors and uh, maging available kami internationally. 
Meanwhile, Manco Chairman Sylvester Belli III believes that exporting of Filipino goods abroad helped boost the Philippine economy and encourages businessmen to venture in exporting their products. Makita mo yung mga food products. At marami dyan. Ngayon ko lang nalaman na nag-export pala tayo ng banana. Uh, may banana chips, may banana, sweetened banana exported to Taiwan from the Philippines. Eh, pati yung paborito kong sardinas, biro mo nakakartina ng Taiwan. And this will ano, encourage other, ano, other businessmen sa atin na mag-export ng kanilang mga products dito. Taiwan is the Philippines' eighth largest trading partner. According to PTIC, in 2022, food exports to Taiwan rose to 51.11 million U.S. dollars from 40.60 million U.S. dollars, equaling to a 3% increase. On Sunday, June 17 marked the last day of the food show in which the general public can try and buy foods featured in the event. I'm Yael Pascual, UNTV News and Rescue Taiwan. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. The Philippine men's football team, known as the Ascos, defeated Nepal in a friendly match yesterday at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Dina Villamor Camara reports. Crowds will gather here today at the Philippine Sports Stadium to show their support for the Philippine Ascos as they battle against Nepal in the 2023 FIFA friendlies. This is actually the first of the two international friendlies set in this country and this will also serve as a preparation for the Ascos in the upcoming World Cup and the AFC Asian Cup tournament set later this year. Another header here. Goalkeeper off his line, and that's in. The Philippines take the lead. It's Harvey Gayoso. Given a tight schedule to prepare for the games, returning coach Hans Michael Wise will bank on the familiarity and experience of the players. 25 players will take part in the June window, notably longtime mainstays. Meanwhile, Sandro Reyes and Andres Aldeguer are among the youngsters who will get a chance to impress coach Wise this time around. It rained heavily when both teams arrive at the stadium at 5.30 p.m., but nevertheless, the fans were all the way to support the team. Both teams started warming up at 6 p.m. Before it started, there was the parade of the players, singing of the national anthem, exchange of tokens, where they gave each other a token of each other's flag, team photo op followed by the official kickoff. Included in the starting lineup of the Philippines are players Patrick Dato, Kevin Ingreso, Oscari Kekonen, and Jesse Curran. Meanwhile, Kiran Limbo, Bimal Pandey, Ananta Tamang, Lakin Limbo, and Eric Bista were part of the starting 11 of Nepal under coach Vicenzo Alberto Anisi. There were a few attempts from the Philippines that almost made it to the goal, yet unfortunately were stopped by the goalkeeper of Nepal. At the 36 minutes of action, substitution took place at the camp of Philippines. Stoible and Kekonen out and Linares and Reichelt in for the team. At the same time, I overheard Coach Weiss shouting to the boys to pass the ball fast. Not too long after this, Patrick Reichelt got injured on his head. Meanwhile, Gayoso at the end of the first half almost scored a goal, but the ball was catched directly by Limbu. But it didn't stop Gayoso as he gave the country the first goal at the fourth minute of action in the second half. The biggest surprise for the fans is when Stephen Schrock came into play at the 73rd minute of action. Schrock was the only player that gave a goal to the country in their maiden stint in the AFC tournament in 2019. 1-0 was the final score on this very exciting match. We got to interview both coaches at the end of the game. Coach Anisi said that his team lacked the aggressiveness on this match. We need to be more, uh, more angry to score, more, uh, more aggressive. Goalkeeper Patrick Philip Dato spoke about his happiness being back in the team. He tried to enjoy um, playing football. Um, I know the importance of, of representing the country. I'm so proud of it. 
Coach Michael Weiss, on the other hand, spoke about the importance of Stephen Schrock for the team. Uh, more than helpful and then very much behind that and then, you know, he's very engaged. He's very hands-on everything. He wants to professionalize things. He's getting on the nerves of the local people, but uh, he, he, in, in a good sense, you know, he's, he's trying to push and trying to help to, to, to bring things forward. Catch the Askals as a day battle against Chinese Taipei is coming June 19, still here at the Rizal Sports Stadium. Another win is a must for the team to be able to set the tone with their next few games this coming year. Rena Villamore Camera, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Now that the SB19 Pagtatag World Tour approaches, 18 have shown their all-out support for the success of the event. Gladys Tawabi will tell us why. They say life is better with music. SB19 fans have expressed that the group's music is not just mere music. In fact, it has a positive impact on their well-being. Actually, I do suffer from anxiety. And every time I do feel like it's attacking me, I just listen to their songs. And then I started to relax my mind go and everything. So I think they really helped me a lot. This 28-year-old Filipino-American is the brains behind SB19 and its upcoming Pagdatag World Tour, which was featured in New York Times Square. She didn't mind spending because, according to her, the group deserves this kind of love and support for making every Filipino proud through their music. I started being a fan way back 2019 when I watched their viral video go up and after that until up to this day I became addictive to their songs and there's just something about them that makes you want to listen and watch them over and over again it's just I think Papaano sila kumonek sa ibang tao, sa audience nila, and that's really amazing. Meanwhile, fans in Iloilo have organized a fan gathering event in the province, showing their commitment to the group. SB19's music with its hard-hitting lines has helped some fans realize the importance of valuing their loved ones. To be honest, I like the lyricism sa SB19. Ay, siguro, okay, pang tanong, ang mapa. Because, uh, for so, hindi ko muna ka-affected sa ibang yung song, no? I feel like hindi, bak, hindi ko tawa ka-relate sa situation. But the mapa itself, ay, nakahibigay ko na sa mapa. It's not really pang etya sa, um, nakahibig ko because I, I'm a very family-oriented person. And I felt like, um, somehow, though, may kulang ako, ay, dupad mo, it, it made me feel na may kulang bala ako sa ano, sa, sa, sa baka sa treatment ko, or sa pag-take care ko sa parents ko, amo na. And it, it is one of the songs na uh, nakatouch kid ka na. Uh, of all less than I do songs, that uh, nakakai-cry, promise. <laughs> uh, sa mapa. Bacolod have also expressed their support and excitement by joining the Ganto Dance Challenge. SB19's Pagdatag World Tour will kick off on June 24 and 25 at the Aranata Coliseum. Apart from Blackstar Entertainment, KDR Music House and Wish 1075 are part of the co-producing team. Aligned with Kuya Daniel Razon's direction of promoting OPM not only in the Philippines but also abroad. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God. From the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 26, it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And those are the reasons behind the news June 16, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Marvi Delphine, live from Australia.
because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariella Toza, live from Perth, Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God.